Playing with Jim, he was kind of our, you know, leader that just showed us all the ropes. Oh yeah. We're up. It was freaking awesome. We were big fish in a small pond, man. Green stuff in my teeth. <laughs> the world famous small town riot. I think that was the best band name we ever had. <laughs> so that was uh, 1968. Rocking, you know, rock and roll. But hey, we're gonna all get the whole band together, and we hadn't been together for probably around some of us hadn't seen each other, any of them for about 30 years. When these guys broke up in '80, '88 or '89 or '90, I can't remember. I used to break a lot. You know, to jump in a truck and take off and and head out to the unknown and stay out there for a while. Uh, it, was a, it was a fun adventure. I told her, yeah. I got a chance to go on the road with a rock and roll band, and she says, good for you. Said, oh. Okay, now all I have to do is tell my boss. If it doesn't work, come back. You can have your job back. I never came back. So we're just over here talking about old times and new times and high times. High times and, and <laughs> front times. Low or times. Or and yeah. Or clever. They've all had crap, but I just got more crabs than them. Take two. So it's a reunion of two bands. It's, it's uh, basically Noswell King and variations on that band, and then another band called Nasty Happy. You see the t shirts running around. A lot of people couldn't uh, couldn't do this, you know, uh, unless we pulled it all together and put them all in one place at one time. So that that's kind of what we've been doing here, and, and uh, uh, it's been a pleasure. It really has. All these people are just great, and, and you know, it's just so fun to see them all see each other again for the first time. My name's Jeff Purdy. Grew up as one of these guys, his younger brother, and uh, just wanted to get everybody together. Time's moving on, and it's been a, a bucket list of mine to get this done. And about a year ago, I contacted Frank, and we started the logistics, and here we are. So Jim Purdy is uh, you know, basically one of the reasons why we're doing this because Jeff Purdy talked to me and said, I'd like to hang out and meet and have, be around them all again. That's Jeff Purdy, his brother Jim Purdy, and his brother played with all of us. He was a guy from Sacramento who moved to Idaho Falls, and it was kind of the connection that pulled all of these people together. I got a lot of benefits. I uh, snuck me into gigs before I was legal age and a lot of other benefits. Okay, so uh, we started playing music and then finally we got Steve and Henry decided, Henry is older than us, the drummer, he lived down the street from me. Now Henry decided he was going to come and come and honor us with his presence, right? Play the drums. I'm here today with my brother Phil. We played together for years with Jim Purdy, Dan, who is here, and with Robbie, and with a bunch of other guys. And Phil also played with Jim in a band called Nosmo King, and one called Nasty Habit, which was another band with the guys here. So it's a big party. We're having a wonderful time. <laughs> Trying to pull a rabbit out of my ass. That's what I'm doing here. Run the lights. Well, they're nice heat lamps. 
You know, keep everybody warm, sweating like a horror in church. Chris, were, they were all playing together and they needed a, somebody to run lights for them. So I went out, I came out to run lights for them. Then a little while later, their front of house guy couldn't get into Canada, so I started doing sound. I fiddled with that before a little bit, so I came out and did, so I started doing sound with them. Nasty habit. Yeah, this band was Nasty Habit, and this was about 1977, 78. I left the band somewhere in there, 78 or 79, and uh, I haven't seen Matt, the guitar player, since 1979 until today. I've never been here before. I'm so happy to be here and be playing with some old friends and some new friends, and uh, it's all good. Legal. I'm very happy to be here with this guy. I don't remember his name, but I'm very happy to be here with him. And then I met Vince, who I never knew existed in, in Nasty Habit. It's a real good piano player. Really, really good keyboard player. Yeah, I was in Nasty Habit. I've known these guys since we were in junior high. I mean, we we started out, I started out, Matt, it's because of him I even played guitar. You know, I started out and I learned a lot from Matt and it just, everything grew from there and I got to know Jim and, and Jeff the Purdy's, I got to know Frank and it just, everything just kind of snowballed and got bigger from there, you know, so. Nasty Habit started out in Eugene, Oregon in about 1975. And it was me, uh, Frank Henderson, Brian Hancock, and a guy named uh, Tom Burke. And it was me playing guitar, Tom Burke on guitar, Brian Hancock on drums, and Frank Henderson on bass and, and lead singing. And we all fairly sang. And we started in Eugene, Oregon. Yeah, well, the story is my good friend Steve Grace, Jim Purdy, and Stan and I started a band in high school, and then later, our second year in college, Steve and I started the matter, another band with Jim and our good friend Dave Furness, and the idea at that age was to meet girls. At one point, we had a bass player named Jerry, and the first girl I met was his sister. That was uh, 47 years ago, <laughs> and we're still together. Jeff Parsons is my name. My nickname's Pig. That's what it was. Slider bar is where it's at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Big, big second plate, see? I am. I am. It's so good. Nobody knows that's my nickname. Jeff's second plate. Mm -hmm. They knew me when I was like four years old. You know, because they were playing music with my brother, with Donnie. I love the show. So when he got in the band, it just ripped. He's a natural showman with jokes and funny. And so he added to Jim, who was the star of the show, both of them worked off each other, and they just picked on me, and I never healed. <laughs> he has husband. the same last name as me. Yeah. My name's Don Parsons, and I'm from Idaho Falls, Idaho. And I play the... Um, Those round deals. Oh, yeah, the bagpipes. <laughs> I, I met Don at Stan's house, and Don was probably about 21 at the time. And I was a little older, 27 or so, and Steve quit their band. They invited me to go on the road with them. And, okay, I'll do it. They turned it into a Canadian tour up to, what was it, Saskatchewan? Alberta. Ca Alberta. We, we play, we play uh, Edmonton for six weeks, 
That whole falls for whatever we can scrap. The three market, months at the syndicate freeze our balls out. Yeah, three months at the syndicate. Edmonton, Edmonton. and we did, that. and that was uh, Dale Eddy. Dale, good and old he's Dale. the one that paved the way for us to rob all that money from Canada. Is it true? Always on my side. Oh boy, I get to pick on somebody yeah, for a while. Still hate. Get back on that hi hat. <laughs> get back on that. What? More foot. What the hell are you doing? Get more foot. Because we didn't know you're supposed to put a microphone next to a bass drum back. Easy it hard. It's a good left it is. We were in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. We were only supposed to play there for a week, and uh, a blizzard hit. And we couldn't go anywhere, and the band that was supposed to follow us couldn't come in, so we were there for another week. Years later, Don called me and said, Come up to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and join our band. I said, I'll try it for six months. And that was 35 years ago. We've had we've had some good times, you know. We've had some bad times. We've uh, we've laughed and I mean, I absolutely cried together about things that have happened with people that we've lost, you know. And uh, and, and I'm glad, like I said, I'm glad this happened. It needed to happen. And we're playing. This is in the middle of playing. And I look at him. I go, "You guys, no." And Mike just kind of looked at him and glared for a second. You know, I said, you guys look like a couple of freaking babies up, you know. They do is they throw the dances, and we'd go play these things, and they'd, they'd charge a buck each, and you'd get, like, somewhere between 500 and 1,000 kids in them gymnasiums. Yeah. Just packed. And that was our first shows. We were little kids. We were, you know, we were 12, 13, 14. We were playing these big old... Venues. Venues full of, yeah. full of a ton of people, and we were doing it, like, every weekend. Matt and I and, and Donnie, we, we we started playing when we were just young, you know, like seven. We played it. We had way more gigs than we ever had time to play, you know, and you know we all had you know a kind of an unrealistic view of the music world because it was it was easy to be big fish in that little pond. We decided we weren't mad anymore, and we're gonna do it again. That's right. <laughs> that was it. Because we spent winter here, <laughs> so we had that small town ride is what it originally started out. The British Wave and Motown. Back then, it kind of evolved into the pure classic rock, didn't it? Yeah, seeing all these guys back together after all these years and the camaraderie and just listening to them talk around the table is just amazing. It's like they, they never skipped a beat. And they get up on stage, do their thing, it's the same thing. It's like it was just 40 years ago. Yeah. And we used to play the rec center in Auto Falls. The Memorial yeah. Guy oh, used to have the rec center yeah. dances on Friday and Saturday night. Oh, wait, that, was our, that was our stock and trade when we yeah. didn't have any place to play in yeah. summertime. Victory dances at the high school. Yeah, victory dances in the, su in the winter. Yeah. And that hometown, you wouldn't you wouldn't really think that, that it would be a good place for music but because it was so close to Yellowstone Park and people it was the last stop where you could get a hotel room that wasn't in Yellowstone Park really. All these hotels along the river there that all had music and, and that kind of made the town a better place for musicians because there was just so many live music venues that, that had music you know every night of the week so a lot of really good players came out of there just because they got to play a lot. It was cool for me today to go and uh... I'm a live engineer, so I do live music. So I'm not used to doing studio stuff like we did in there today. That was really cool for me to go in there with Frank and mess around in there. I was blown away by the uh, amount of equipment that he uh, actually bought for recording. That's, I, that blows me away. Oh, it was wonderful. That's one of the. I've done some recording work when I lived in Los Angeles. 
And uh, that is a hell of a studio he's got here. When we first pulled in and we saw, you know, we were looking around. We go, where's this studio that Frank's talking about, you know? And then we looked and I thought, you know, my girlfriend Carrie said, you know, that can't be it. You know, that can't be it. And uh, we walked in and opened that door and sure enough, there it was. And I mean, it, once you get inside, it, it, it's it's something else, man. He did, it's a labor of love. He put a lot of, a lot of work into it, so, you know. It's, it's great, it's a beautiful home. Gosh, what a studio, you know. I, I was saying to one of the guys, how do you do this? How do you put this together, you know? You know, and uh, I mean, I heard Frank what he's doing here, and, you know, playing and stuff and in between, and you know, he's really accomplished in addition besides everything else he's done. So like, like when Phil first got here and he goes, he turned, he got his guitar and he goes, we're really doing this, you know? we're, we're all together doing this. He said, we're really lucky Frank got what he's got going on. He goes, yeah, man. I'd, I'd like to say to Frank and to Jeff who made this possible that uh, it's, uh, it's been really wonderful seeing a lot of old friends again, playing music together again. Uh, thank everybody for, you know, from all the band members of Nasty Habit and Nosmo King that showed up and, and made this thing a, a wonderful event. It's, it's kind of hard for me. My brother died 25 years ago, and you hear a lot of these guys talking about how Jim Purdy got, got them off into this line of work and, and got it all together. It's kind of hard, bittersweet. Uh, but you know what? They're just like family, and the love they've extended towards me has been wonderful. Hello to everybody. Hello to Esther. I hope this gets to Jim's mom, Esther Purdy. Shoot through and through.